Hello, this is Scott Cordell, and this video is for CSC 210 Database Design. Specifically today, we're going to talk about Week 2, uh, the assignments 2.1 and 2.2. Uh, this video is going to be for assignment 2.1 first, and if I can squeeze it in, we'll get the 2.2 in here as well. Uh, first of all, on the screen here, you can see I'm logged into the course in Blackboard, and we're looking at assignment 2.1, which is create an ER diagram for all three databases. Uh, now, if you've read through Chapter 1 and a little bit of Chapter 2, you've learned that ER diagrams are abbreviated for Entity Relationship Diagrams. Entities are the tables. Relationships are the arrows that connect them to tell how they're related. Uh, so what we're going to do is down here I have provided some instructions to show you exactly all the instructions you can use if you're going to use Visio, which is built in on the school's uh, desktop.sullivan.edu program. But I honestly provide or uh, prefer Lucidchart. And so what I'm going to do is go over to Lucidchart. You can create a free account here as a student. And then uh, once you go through and you create student, you tell them that this is for education, you're a student, uh, you're using it for class. You will get into Lucidchart, and you will be allowed up to three uh, charts at a time. Uh, if you want to do more than three, you have to delete one and add another. However, uh, over here on Lucidchart, uh, I'm already logged in on my account. I want you to notice that you can click on your initials over here, or if you've added your picture, either way. Uh, go to Account Settings, and once Account Settings has completely loaded, and you may have to give it a second, uh, what you're going to do is come down the menu here on the, on the left side, and under Storage, you'll have a button here that talks about an educational upgrade. If you click that link, and on the following screen, send the email to yourself, check your student email for this, then what it's going to do is actually give you a chance to click a link and get the full upgrade for free uh, and, and for lifetime. Now, I do recommend when you go to Lucidchart, you do log in with your Sullivan student email account because you can actually link that to your OneDrive and everything else, and, and everything works beautifully together. So I've already done that. Now, again, what we're trying to create, I'll go ahead and open this one so you'll see, is this thing. Now, this ER diagram here shows all of the tables. So I've got a table here called Consultant, another one called Client, one called Work Orders, Order Line, and then task, and between these five tables, they're all connected in one way or the other. Notice task is only connected to order line, and same thing, work orders is connected to client, but it's also connected here through this relationship to order line. So if we look at the consultant table, the top row here that's centered at the top is the name of the table, and these are the columns in order. Now if you'll take a look at the book, which I've done by going to MindTap, uh, this is figure 1.7, then this is what we're trying to create. Now, I'm, I don't want just this picture, and I don't need the green bubbles and all these other arrows. What I'm looking for you to do is to build the tables and show me the relationships. So, honestly, just like that. Now, what I'm going to do is go through and show you how to get started with this. In Lucidchart, you'll click New Document, and we're going to build this from a template. In the templates, what we want to do is scroll down until you see Database Diagrams, and they give you all of these templates that are built in. Now, yes, there is a, ER, a blank ER with data flow. We don't need the data flow right now. There is one with UML notation. Here's another way to import and export all this stuff directly from databases. But again, we're just going to start with a plain blank ordinary one. So I'm going to click that and tell it to go ahead and open the template. This does open in a new tab every time, so I can always go back and have multiple documents open, as you can see I have now. Now, in this one, they do give you some basic guidance here. Uh, first of all, your file is now called blank ERD. I'm going to click on the name there and call this Bits uh, Corporation. And I'm going to go ahead and put Spring 2020 on mine because I've done this several times. I don't want to get my files confused. And when I click away from that or press Enter, that's the name of the file now. It saves right here. You don't have to go to File and do Save As and all this other. A lot of it's very interactive on the web. Notice that that also changes up here, the name of my file that's built into that label. So we don't need to do much more with that. Now, if I want to move these around uh, on this screen, I can actually zoom in and out this way. I can hold down my Control button and use the scroll of my mouse to zoom in and out as well. If I want to move it, I can right-click and drag it around. So it's... It's pretty intuitive for the most part. There's not a whole lot of extra stuff that you need to know. Now our toolbars over here, as far as the shapes we can use, 
We've got the standard ones that are in every Lucid chart piece that's there. And then we have the entities. And the arrow is what we're going to use for relationships. And I've already changed my line, as you can see, to look more like the crow's foot uh, diagrams. Uh, the ones that are in the book, by the way, back here, this is a screenshot of the relationship view in Access. If you build the tables correctly and come in here and do some things in Access, you can take a screenshot of just this. It's not that I'm against Access, but Access is not a large-scale tool that an organization would use. Uh, to be honest, there's no way that Amazon could run their business if they were doing all of their inventory or orders or any part of any inventory in Access. It just doesn't grow up that big. It's not meant to do that. So we're moving more toward a, a larger organization of a database system, a relational database system. And because of that, we just can't use Access for everything. We will use Access this week for 2.2 and a little bit next week, and then that will be it. From there on out, we're going to start using uh, MySQL for all of this. So what we need to do is, again, back in this diagram, I'm going to build this first. I want to get the consultant table built with all of the different pieces that are there. So I've got one field here at the top that's going to be part of it, and then I need nine others at the bottom and just to, to finish all those. So I'm going to grab just this entity. I don't need entity with extra stuff on it or any of this stuff. I just need a plain entity. So I'm going to drag it over into a workspace here. And right now there are three fields at the bottom, three columns. I can see that right here. And if I go ahead and make that nine like we needed, then now I just double click and start typing in. And I will need to go and flip back and forth at the document real quick so I can get this. And I think I'm, oh, zip code. And then hours and rate. Okay. And again, I can always go back. And once I click away from that, there's my whole database right now. Now that is just one table, and all of these fields are centered. That's not really appropriate. It needs to be more like this. Uh, if yours stay centered, it's not that big a deal, but this is easy to change. If I go into each one of these fields, I can easily adjust any of them to fit over like that. The problem is the one at the top, consultant, should be centered. It's the other ones down below that should not, but notice I can't grab a piece of it. It's going to always align the entire thing. So for now, I would leave it as it is. Uh, we can actually come and adjust this later, but I'm more worried about can you get an entity in here and show a relationship. So for the next one, uh, let's go ahead and get the client table. So again, we'll do the same action. Grab the entity block, drag it over here to a space, uh, if I go back and count, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 again. So I can bump this up to 9. By the way, you can also, once you click in here, I can go ahead and add others in here. Notice then, for some reason, uh, that indents the other way. It's just part of it. I, I haven't figured that one out yet. Uh, I'm trying. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see if I can ever get that to work right or not. can do that. So now they at least match. All right, so these are the two tables we've got. What we need now is to put in this relationship. Now this relationship arrow or this relationship connector is from Access, and because of that, there is a one and then an infinity sign. This is a one-to-many relationship, and that's a little different. We don't have those symbols that we can use. Notice the arrow here it doesn't do a good job of that at all. So what I'm going to do is this. Instead of trying to connect this arrow exactly where I want it to do, notice that these lines in the diagram connect consultant number to consultant number. So I'm going to make sure that these two connect to here. It isn't just a line somewhere in this table to somewhere in that table. It is a line directly between these two columns or these two fields. Now, I'm not going to try to connect them in the beginning. I'm going to drag this line out here. And it's trying to grab onto stuff, so make sure it doesn't touch anything. So there's good. 
And notice mine is already set to be crow's foot like, and the way I did that is right here. There's nothing at the end of that arrow. And then here, I had to scroll down till I got to the mini part. And there are lots of other options here I could do as well. Sorry, that's, yeah, there's the one I needed. So now I'm going to grab, again, you can look at this either as having a head or a tail, but I'm going to grab the left end first. And because in our diagram, this is the one and this is the mini, the mini is going to be the part that looks like a crow's foot, and this is just going to have the one on the end. So what I'm going to do is grab this end and click, and notice I can drag it till it touches one of these. Again, I could come over and do this as well, but then my lines are going to get around the shape. Notice it won't go through the shape. So I want to grab this to connect it there, anchor it, and then grab the other end and do the same thing. And again, be careful not to just hit any spot. You want to anchor it to the spot that it needs to be, and just like that. And so that is how you're going to anchor each of these lines. Now, the reason we want to anchor it is because now if we grab this shape and move it around anywhere, the arrows stick. So I don't have to go and reconnect everything if I have to move. And that's how you build an entity relationship diagram. Now, in this particular one, it would be more correct if I had a 1 right here. So instead of doing none, I could actually scroll down to where all of these are again. And notice there's the 1 symbol across the line. And so now I have a 1 to many relationship. Again, you're going to continue this process. Generally, what I do is try to get all the tables in and then do all the relationships. It does take some patience and practice. Uh, this, these lines can connect all over the place. They can do some really weird, weird things if you're not used to it. So this exercise is just getting you used to a tool that we're going to use to do a lot of design this quarter. Again, your results should look something like that. Now, again, I, I was able to get mine left aligned because I deleted all the rows, added them in bra brand new, and it let me do that. I also took off the edges on my, um, as far as the rounded edges. Uh, honestly, rounded edges look a little nicer and, and kinder, but if you want to take these rounded edges off, you can click the shape right here. And then when you go into the shape options at the top here, you can actually tell it that you don't want this rounded at all. So take off all of the rounded. And now it nice, looks nice and rigid and cold and sterile. So uh, you can do it that way. Either way is fine. Uh, I'm more worried about can you put in entities, and then once you get these in with the right columns, can you get the relationships tied in the correct way as well. So again, this video I'm going to cut short and uh, come back and produce another video for the next part, which will be exercises 2.2 or assignment 2.2, which will teach us how to do the uh, assignment that lets us actually use access to grab some of this data using a design view inside of the query. So again, this is Scott Cordell. Thank you for watching, and I'll have another video up for Assignment 2.2 .2 shortly.